Today, we are getting into the nitty-gritty of crystal morphology, the study of a crystal's external form. Understanding these features is crucial for identifying minerals and deciphering their formation history. Let's start with the building blocks, crystal faces. These are the flat surfaces that define a crystal's shape. They directly reflect the internal arrangement of atoms, like windows into the crystal's hidden world. Most faces are flat, but some, like diamonds and certain carbonates, can be curved. Now, crystals can have faces of the same type, like a perfect cube of galena. These are called like faces because, they share identical properties. Zircon, on the other hand, might have a combination of flat and pointed faces, which are classified as unlike faces. Remember, the size of a face doesn't define like or unlike. For example, a cube with uneven faces is still considered to have like faces. So, we can say that, like faces have the same properties, and unlike faces have different properties. Crystals with only like faces are called, single forms, whereas those with a mix of like and unlike faces are known as, combination forms. Moving on, where two faces meet, we get a crystal edge. Edges are always straight because they follow the intersection lines of the faces. Finally, let's explore the corners. When three or more faces converge at a point, we get a solid angle, which is also called a vertex. Here's where things get interesting. There's a formula that connects the number of faces, solid angles, and edges in a crystal. It's called the Euler's formula, and written F plus V equals A plus 2, where F is the number of faces, V the number of vertices, and A the number of edges. Let's test it out with our trusty cube. A cube has 6 faces, 8 solid angles, and 12 edges. Plugging these values into the formula, we get 6 plus 8 equals 12 plus 2, which holds true. So, the next time you encounter a crystal, examine its faces, edges, and vertices. You might even be able to use this formula to determine their quantities. This understanding forms a cornerstone in crystallography.